Hello everyone. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about stem eels, which is scanning transmission electron microscopy coupled with electron energy loss spectroscopy. But before explaining what stem is, what we really need to talk about is TEM, because the main difference between these two techniques for imaging via electrons is in the configuration of the beam. So an electron gun spews electrons that then become focused and unfocused through a series of condenser lenses. This spreads the beam that then interacts with your sample at the specimen stage. After the beam interacts with your sample, it goes through an objective lens and a series of apertures that can be used for doing diffraction patterns or dark field imaging. The beam then moves through a series of lenses which continually focus and spread the beam further apart in order to create the final magnified image. This is different than STEM, or scanning transmission electron microscopy, where the electron gun still produces electrons that still move through condenser lenses. However, in this configuration, the second condenser lens is usually switched off, and the beam then moves through a third condenser lens. The third condenser lens focuses the electron beam to a single point at the specimen stage. This interaction produces electrons that then can be detected by bright field and dark field detectors underneath the specimen. Backscattered and secondary electrons can also be detected, however the important thing to remember is that in STEM mode, the beam is focused to a single point at the sample. Image formation in STEM mode comes from the fact that your sample interacts with the beam at a singular point. This point can be rastered across the sample and electrons collected at every single position of the beam by detectors. And so, the resolution of a stem image comes from how well the beam is focused, or the beam's spot size. If the beam is focused to a very fine point, then the, each position in the raster scan will be relatively small and therefore close together. If the beam is focused widely, that means less spots collected across the sample and a poorer resolution. This brings us to the topic of eels. No, not electric eels. Electron energy loss spectroscopy, which doesn't mean that little electrons run in a race. Electrons from the beam interact with the sample when they hit it and then move through the sample. These electrons in the incident beam have an energy of X and they may have an energy of less than X upon leaving the sample. This could be due to inelastic scattering. So how do we turn inelastic scattering into useful information to be used for spectroscopy? Well, when the electron beam hits and exits the sample, these electrons can then be funneled into a special electron spectrometer that spreads them based on energy. This can then be funneled into a detector, and this detector produces a spectrum based on the energy differences in the electron. The spectrum produced is plotted as a function of the number of electrons or electron counts versus the amount of energy that they lost. This results in a plot of several different components, the first and most importantly being the zero loss peak. This is the peak associated with electrons that lost no energy when moving through the sample, which is the majority of them. Secondly, there's the plasmon peak in the low loss region. The third and final region of the spectrum starts at around 600 electron volts of energy loss. Peaks in this region are called core loss edge peaks and act as a chemical fingerprint for the elements in the sample. The electron source in the microscope is extremely monochromatic. Therefore, it is known with a very high certainty the energy of the electrons entering and therefore leaving the sample. The amount of energy lost upon interaction with the sample has to do with the electronic structure of the element. Therefore, this recording of energy loss is an extremely specific way to characterize a sample based on element identity. However, Elements with high atomic mass do not yield very much signal in eels and therefore another method must be used. So because stem eels is a technique most suited for low Z elements, what do you do to characterize high Z elements? EDS or energy dispersive x-ray spectroscopy is a technique that can be used complementary to stem eels in order to better characterize high Z elements. The configuration of the microscope can be set up the same way. However, instead of electrons being collected through the spectrometer and to the eels detector, an x-ray detector can be set up near the sample stage. EDS is better for characterization of high Z elements and is bad for the characterization of low Z elements. The yield of x-rays in the case of low Z elements is very low due to Auger processes. Thanks for listening to this brief introduction of STEM eels. I hope it was helpful and informative. If you have any other questions about anything else mentioned in the video, the internet is a really great place to search for all of these topics.